Biafra Biafra, officially the Republic of Biafra, was a secessionist state in West Africa which existed from May 30, 1967 to January 1970. It was made up of the states in the eastern region of Nigeria. Biafra's attempt to leave Nigeria resulted in the Nigerian Civil War. The state was formally recognized by Gabon, Haiti, Ivory Coast, Tanzania, and Zambia. Other nations, which did not give official recognition but provided support and assistance to Biafra, included Israel, France, Spain, Portugal, Norway, Rhodesia, South Africa, and the Vatican City. Biafra also received aid from non state actors, including Joint Church Aid, Holy Ghost Fathers of Ireland, and under their direction Caritas International, Mark Press, and U.S. Catholic Relief Services. Its inhabitants were mostly Igbo, who led the secession due to economic, ethnic, cultural, and religious tensions among the various peoples of Nigeria. Other ethnic groups that were present were the Ethic, Ibibio, Anong, Ijagam, Ikat, Ibeno, and the Ija, among others. After two and a half years of war, during which almost two million Biafran civilians died from starvation caused by the total blockade of the region by the Nigerian government and the migration of Biafra's Igbo people into increasingly shrinking territory, Biafran forces under the motto of No Victor, No Vanquished surrendered to the Nigerian Federal Military Government, FMG, and Biafra was reintegrated into Nigeria. The surrender was facilitated by the Biafran Vice President and Chief of General Staff. Major General Philip F. Young who assumed leadership of the defunct republic after the original president, Colonel Chukwumemeka Ajamegwu Ochukwu fled to Ivory Coast. Little is known about the literal meaning of the word Biafra. The word Biafra most likely derives from the subgroup Biafar or Biafata of the Tenda ethnic group who reside primarily in Guinea-Bissau. Manuel Alvarez, 1526-1583, a Portuguese Jesuit educator, in his work Ethiopia Minor and a Geographical Account of the Province of Sierra Leone, writes about the Biafar heathen in Chapter 13 of the same book. The word Biafar thus appears to have been a common word in the Portuguese language back in the 16th century. In 1960, Nigeria became independent of the United Kingdom. As with many other new African states, the borders of the country did not reflect earlier ethnic, cultural or religious boundaries. Thus, the northern region of the country has a Muslim majority, while the southern population is predominantly Christian. Following independence, Nigeria was divided primarily along ethnic lines with a Hausa and Fulani majority in the north, and Yoruba and Igbo majorities in the southwest and southeast, respectively. In January 1966, a military coup occurred during which a group of predominantly Igbo junior army officers assassinated 30 political leaders, including Nigeria's prime minister. Sir Abu Bakar Bailwa, and the Northern Premier, Sir Amadou Bello. The four most senior officers of Northern origin were also killed. Namdi Azakiwe, the President, of Igbo Extraction, and the Premier of the southeastern part of the country were not killed, and the Commander of the Army, General Agigi Ironsai, seized power to maintain order. In July 1966, Northern officers and army units staged a counter coup. Muslim officers named a general from a small ethnic group. The Angas, in central Nigeria, General Yakub Bujakgan, as the head of the federal military government, FMG. The two coups deepened Nigeria's ethnic tensions. In September 1966, approximately 30,000 Igbo were killed in the north, and some northerners were killed in backlashes in eastern cities. Chukswumeka Ajamegwu Ochikwu proposed a confederated Nigeria. In January 1967, the military leaders and senior police officials of each region met in Aburi, Ghana and agreed on a loose confederation of regions. The northerners were at odds with the Aburi Accord, Obafemi Awolao, the leader of the western region warned that if the eastern region seceded, the western region would also, which persuaded the northerners. After the federal and eastern governments failed to reconcile, on 26 May the eastern region voted to secede from Nigeria. On 30 May, Chukswumeka Ajamegwu Ojikwu, the southeastern region's military governor, announced the Republic of Biafra, citing the Easterners Kiladine the post-coup violence. The large amount of oil in the region created conflict, as oil was already becoming a major component of the Nigerian economy. The eastern region was very ill-equipped for war, outmanned and outgunned by the military of the remainder of Nigeria. Their advantages included fighting in their homeland and support of most southeasterners. The FMG launched police measures to annex the eastern region on July 6, 1967. 
The FMG's initial efforts were unsuccessful, the Biafrans successfully launched their own offensive, occupying areas in the Midwestern region in August 1967. By October 1967, the FMG had regained its land after intense fighting. In September 1968, the Federal Army Plan with GAN described as the final offensive. Initially the final offensive was neutralized by Biafran troops. In the latter stages, a southern FMG offensive managed to break through the fierce resistance. It is believed that one of the major factors that sparked the war was the unilateral declaration of independence for Biafra made by Kao Da Chukwu and Mecca Ajumegwu Ojukwu in 1967. He eventually died 41 years after the end of the Civil War on 26 November 2011, aged 78, after a brief illness, many years after the internal conflict, secession and war. The former Republic of Biafra comprised over of land, with terrestrial borders shared with Nigeria to the north and west, and with Cameroon to the east. Its coast was on the Gulf of Guinea of the South Atlantic Ocean in the south. The former country's northeast bordered the Benue Hills and mountains that lead to Cameroon. Three major rivers flow from Biafra into the Gulf of Guinea the Emo River, the Cross River, and the Niger River. The territory of the former Republic of Biafra is covered nowadays by the reorganized Nigerian states of Cross River, Aboni, Enugu, Anambra, Emo, Bialsa, Rivers, Abia, and Akwa Ibom. While the Igbo people of the current Nigerian state of Delta were not included in Biafra as Parojik was decree founding Biafra, some Delta Igbo did fight on the Biafran secessionist side. Whilst it existed, the predominant language of Biafra was Igbo. Along with Igbo, there were a variety of other languages, including Epic, Ogoni, Ija, Anong, and Ibibio. However, English was used as the official language. An early institution created by the Biafran government was the Bank of Biafra, accomplished under Decree No. 3 of 1967. The bank carried out all central banking functions including the administration of foreign exchange and the management of the public debt of the republic. The bank was administered by a governor and four directors, the first governor, who signed on bank notes, was Sylvester Ugo. A second decree, Decree No. 4 of 1967, modified the Banking Act of the Federal Republic of Nigeria for the Republic of Biafra. The bank was first located in Enugu, but due to the outgoing war, it was relocated several times. Biafra attempted to finance the war through foreign exchange. After Nigeria announced their currency would no longer be legal tender, to make way for a new currency, this effort increased. After the announcement, tons of Nigerian banknotes were transported in an effort to acquire foreign exchange. The currency of Biafra had been the Nigerian pound, until the Bank of Biafra started printing out its own notes. The Biafran pound. The new currency went public on January 28, 1968 and the Nigerian pound was not accepted as an exchange unit. The first issue of the bank notes included only 5 shillings notes and 1 pound notes. The Bank of Nigeria exchanged only 30 pounds for an individual and 300 pounds for enterprises in the second half of 1968. In 1969 new notes were introduced, 10 pounds, 5 pounds, 1 pound, 10 slash and 5 slash. It is estimated that a total of 115 pounds to 140 million Biafran pounds were in circulation by the end of the conflict, with a population of about 14 million, approximately 10 pounds per person. In uncirculated condition these are very inexpensive and readily available for collectors. At the beginning of the war Biafra had 3,000 soldiers, but at the end of the war the soldiers totaled 30,000. There was no official support for the Biafran army in any other nation throughout the war although arms were clandestinely acquired. Because of the lack of official support, the Biafrans manufactured many of their weapons locally. Europeans served in the Biafran cause, German-born Rolf Steiner was a lieutenant colonel assigned to the 4th Commando Brigade and Welshman Taffy Williams served as a major until the very end of the conflict. A special guerrilla unit, the Biafran Organization of Freedom Fighters, was established, designed to emulate the insurrectionist guerrilla forces of the Viet Cong in the American, Vietnamese War targeting Nigerian Federal Army supply lines and forcing them to shift forces to internal security efforts. The Biafrans managed to set up a small yet effective air force. The BOF commander was Jan Zumbach, early inventory included four World War II American bombers 2B-25 Mitchells, 2B-26 Invaders, Douglas A-26, one piloted by Polish World War II ace Jan Zumbach, known also as John Brown, who bought and flew these plane from Europe to Biafra 
officially plane was bought for the Gabon Air Force, a converted Douglas DC-3 and one British de Havilland in 1968 the Swedish pilot Carl Gustav von Rosen suggested the Mini Koi project to General Ojuk Wu. By early 1969, Biafra had assembled five MFI-9 BS in neighboring Gabon, calling them Biafra babies. They were colored green, were able to carry six 68mm anti-armor rockets under each wing and had simple sights. The six airplanes were flown by three Swedish pilots and three Biafran pilots. In September 1969, Biafra acquired four ex-Army Delair North American of North American T-6 Texans, T-6GS, which were flown to Biafra the following month, with another aircraft lost on the ferry flight. These aircraft flew missions until January 1970 and were flown by Portuguese ex-military pilots. Biafra also had a small improvised navy, but it never gained the success that their air force did. It was headquartered in Kidney Island, Port Harcourt, and commanded by Winifred Danaku. The Biafra navy was made up of captured craft, converted tugs, and armor-reinforced civilian vessels armed with machine guns or captured six-pounder guns. It mainly operated in the Niger River Delta and along the Niger River. The international humanitarian organization Médecins Sans Frontières originated in response to the suffering in Biafra. During the crisis, French medical volunteers, in addition to Biafran health workers and hospitals, were subjected to attacks by the Nigerian army and witnessed civilians being murdered and starved by the blockading forces. French doctor Bernard Kouchner also witnessed these events, particularly the huge number of starving children, and, when he returned to France, he publicly criticized the Nigerian government and the Red Cross for their seemingly complicit behavior. With the help of other French doctors, Kushner put Biafra in the media spotlight and called for an international response to the situation. These doctors, led by Kushner, concluded that a new aid organization was needed that would ignore political religious boundaries and prioritize the welfare of victims. In their study, Smallpox and Its Eradication, Fenner and colleagues describe how vaccine supply shortages during the Biafra smallpox campaign led to the development of the focal vaccination technique, later adopted worldwide by the World Health Organization of the United Nations, which led to the early and cost-effective interruption of smallpox transmission in West Africa and elsewhere. On May 29, 2000, the Lagos Guardian newspaper reported that the now ex-president Olusegun Obasanjo commuted to retirement of the dismissal of all military persons, soldiers and officers, who fought for the breakaway Republic of Biafra during Nigeria's 1967-1970 civil war. In a national broadcast, he said the decision was based on the belief that justice must at all times be tempered with mercy. In July 2006 the Center for World Indigenous Studies reported that government-sanctioned killings were taking place in the southeastern city of Onitsha, because of a shoot-to-kill policy directed toward Biafran loyalists, particularly members of the movement for the actualization of the sovereign state of Biafra Massa. In 2010, researchers from Karolinska Institute had in Sweden and University of Nigeria at Nsukka showed that Igbos born in Biafra during the years of the famine were of higher risk of suffering from obesity hypertension and impaired glucose metabolism compared to controls born a short period after the famine had ended in the early 1970s. The findings are in line with the developmental origin of health and disease hypothesis suggesting that malnutrition in early life is a predisposing factor for cardiovascular diseases and diabetes later in life. A 2017 paper found that Biafran women exposed to the war in their growing years exhibit reduced adult stature, increased likelihood of being overweight earlier age at first birth, and lower educational attainment. Exposure to a primary education program mitigates impacts of war exposure on education. War exposed men marry later and have fewer children. War exposure of mothers, but not fathers, has adverse impacts on child growth, survival, and education. Impacts vary with age of exposure. For mother and child health, the largest impacts stem from adolescent exposure. There is no central authority coordinating the Biafran resuccession campaign after the death of ex-Biafra government leader Chukwu Emeka Ajumegwu Ojukwu who worked closely with Masab during his lifetime. Historically, the movement for the actualization of the sovereign state of Biafra, Masab, is the first non-violent Biafra group that emerged on the present day of the late former Biafra president General Ojukwu in 1999 when Masab openly rehoisted the Biafra flag in Abia state and declared 25 strategies to actualize a their peaceful goal. After the death of General Ojukwu in 2011, 
numerous groups have emerged advocating for a separate country for the people of southeastern Nigeria. Biafra groups continue to surface after the death of Ojikswuda to advance Biafra restoration. Massive leader Chief Ralph Fuazuruike established Radio Biafra in the United Kingdom, Great Britain, in 2009, with Mr. Nandi Kanu as his radio director. Later Kanu was said to have been dismissed from Massive because of accusations of supporting violence that is against Massive philosophy. The Biafra agitators accuse the state and the Federal Republic of Nigeria of marginalizing the Igbo people. Massive says it is a peaceful group and advertises a 25 stage plan to achieve its goal peacefully. It has two arms of government, the Biafra government in exile and the Biafra shadow government. The Nigerian federal government accuses Massive of violence. Massive's leader, Ralph Wazuruike, was arrested in 2005 and was detained on treason charges. He has since been released and has been rearrested and released more than five times. In 2009, Massive leader Chief Wazuruike launched an unrecognized Biafran international passport and also launched a Biafra plate number in 2016 in response to persistent demand by some Biafran sympathizers in the diaspora and at home. On June 16, 2012, a Supreme Council of Elders of the Indigenous People of Biafra, another pro-Biafra organization was formed, the body is made up of some prominent persons in southeastern Nigeria, they sued the Federal Republic of Nigeria for the right to self-determination within their region as a sovereign state, Debe Ajimegwu Ojikwu, an eldest son of ex-president, General Ojikwu and a Lagos state-based lawyer was the lead counsel tat champion the case. In 2011, Mr. Namdi Khan made a new plan with his London-based staffs and reopened the Biafra Radio London and in 2012, Mr. Dot Kanu and his staffs moved under the umbrella of Bilia Human Right Initiative, BHRI, which is registered in Nigeria by a London-based barrister, Emika Emekisa Ridadipab and its sister organizations, among which are Movement for the Actualization of the Sovereign State of Biafra, Masabes and the Biafra Nations Youth League, PNIL have accused the Nigerian army and the police of extrajudicial killings of their members. The Nigerian government, through its broadcasting regulators, the Broadcasting Organization of Nigerian, BON, and Nigerian Communications Commission NCC, has sought to clamp down on the UK-based station with limited success. On November 17, 2015, the Abia State Police Command seized an IPOB radio transmitter in Ramuahia. Kanu was detained by the federal government and released on April 24, 2017. Meanwhile, the group, Biafra Nations Youth League, BNYL, comprising mainly members from the present South South Nigeria, especially the Old Cross River region, now Bakasi, Cross River State, and Akwa Ibom State, including Igbo members, have organized series of grassroots congress, especially in towns such as Ikom, Ikat, Bakasi, Itu, Ikware, Abadu. A hot on other areas of their influence, one of their leader, Ebuta Ogartikan, from the Ekoi, also known as the Jagam, ethnic group in Cross River State, also a tribe in Cameroon, disclosed to Nigeria Sun newspaper that the Bnil struggle for Biafra independence is not limited to the Igbo people cluster of southeast Nigeria alone but all inhabitants of the Bight of Biafra in Nigeria. Bnil leadership said that the neglect of Bakasi refugees and marginalization of the Igbo, Ekoi, Ibibio and other ethnic groups of southeastern Nigeria area among reasons for Biafra agitation. The various groups clamoring for the restoration of the independence of Biafra have often been beset with internal wranglings that have impeded its secessionist efforts. On October 19, 2015, Chief Ralph Wazuruike of the Movement for the Actualization of the Sovereign State of Biafra, Massive, disclosed that the director of Radio Biafra and leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, on RRBL, Nandi Kanu, does not belong to the movement and was sacked for indiscipline and for inciting violence among members. In 2016, another Massab director of information Mr. Ruchanamadu was expelled from Massab for misconduct and inciting violence, Mr. Madu is now leading another faction of Massab. In 2017, Massab launched another radio station named Voice of Biafra International, and also rebranded Massab with the name, Biafra Independent Movement, BIM in order to illustrate his commitment on his non-violent declaration since 1999. Nil has continued to distance itself from the internal wrangling between Massab and Ipob, although Prince Will Chumezi Richard, also nicknamed Apuka, national leader of Nil, as reported by the New Telegraph Nigeria, announced the group withdrawal from a coalition of pro-Biafra groups, following the union announcement declaring the Ipob leader, Nandi Kanu overall leader of the Biafran struggle.
This he said was done without due consultations and consideration of other groups' opinions. He was arrested and rearrested in Bakasi Peninsula following two attempts to mobilize the Bnil faithful for a protest in support of Biafra. There have been several protests from many Biafra groups, and intense agitation for Biafra and secession. Since August 1999, protests have erupted in cities across Nigeria's southeast. Though peaceful, the protesters have been routinely attacked by the Nigerian police and army, with scores of people reportedly killed. Many others have been injured and or arrested. On December 23, 2015, the federal government charged Namdi Kanu with treasonable felony in the federal high court in Abuja. According to the Southeast based Coalition of Human Rights Organizations, SPCROs, Security forces under the directive of the federal government has killed 80 members of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, and their supporters between August 30, 2015 and February 9, 2016 in a renewed clampdown on the movement. A report by Amnesty International also accuses the Nigerian military of killing at least 17 unarmed Biafran separatists in the city of Onitsha prior to a March on May 30, 2016 commemorating the 49th anniversary of the initial secession of Biafra. The incorporated trustees of Bilia Human Rights Initiative, representing the IPOB, have filed suit against the federal government of Nigeria and Attorney General of the Federation, seeking the actualization of the sovereign state of Biafra by legal means. The federal high court, Abuja has fixed February 25, 2019 for hearing the suit. Early modern maps of Africa from the 15th-19th centuries, drawn by European cartographers from accounts written by explorers and travelers, reveal some information about Biafra. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.